Hey Savvy people, it's Savvy Nick here and today we'll be going through how to install the Windows subsystem for Linux on Windows 11 and how to run graphical applications directly from the subsystem for Linux using a great app and not having to install a desktop environment on it. So we'll first start off by enabling the subsystem for Linux. If you go down to your search bar and search for features, this will allow you to see the turn Windows features on or off. This is what you want to select. And then we'll get a dialog with loaded features that may or may not be selected already. And we'll scroll down to the bottom where we'll see a few that we need to enable for the Windows subsystem for Linux to work. I'll let you know that this will also work in Windows 10. It's a fairly similar process, so you should be able to follow along just as easily. We'll want the virtual machine platform selected. We'll also want the Windows hypervisor platform selected. And finally, we'll want the Windows subsystem subsystem for Linux selected. These all three are required to set up your virtual environment and to install the Windows subsystem for Linux. This is WSL version 2 that's being installed and will allow us to use particular Linux distributions directly in our Windows machine through the use of virtualization. Great stuff if you're working on Linux development or just programming in general. I'm going to hit OK and then I'll take a moment to apply the changes and once the changes and features have been added, we'll get a message like this that says Windows completed the requested changes. We'll need to restart now in order for those changes to take effect. So let's do that right away and hit restart now. All right, and now after the computer has successfully fully restarted. Our feature should be enabled, but before we can use the Windows subsystem for Linux, we'll have to install some sort of Linux distribution from the Microsoft Store. So we'll launch the Microsoft Store real quick and search for our particular distribution. The one I'm going to be using today is Ubuntu, so I'll type that into search, and we'll get various different versions of Ubuntu available to us. Looks like 20.04 long-term support is the latest one available for the Windows subsystem for Linux. So I'll select that one and let things load. Up here it says free. You can select it and it will start the install. But before we do, let me also show you you can install stuff like Kali Linux if you're interested in that instead. This is more known as a hacking distribution for people who want to test for vulnerabilities and security on networks. You can install this one instead. There's also more Linux distributions available for the Windows subsystem for Linux. But again, I'm going with Ubuntu today. I'll select the free free up top and then give it a few moments to download and install. Once things are installed here, you'll see the open button come up. We'll select this in a moment, but I do want to mention these images are around three or so gigs once they're fully installed on your system. You can always uninstall them from the add or remove programs section of your system. So I'm going to hit open and now I get a terminal that says installing this may take a few minutes. So give it a few moments here as things get installed. It's really finalizing things here for Ubuntu. Once things are finally set, you'll be asked to enter a new Unix name. This is your username. So make sure to put in whatever username you want. I'm going to put in Savvy Nick for myself and then press enter. You'll be asked for a password now. So type in whatever password you want. One thing I will mention is if you are typing and nothing's showing up, that's not a problem. That's how it's supposed to work. So it doesn't give up your password while you're typing it in. Just press enter once you've typed it in. And then to confirm that password, retype it and press enter. If things go well, you'll get a bunch of information displayed to you and you'll be welcome to Ubuntu 20.04.3 long-term support. So this is great. You pretty much have Ubuntu and the Windows subsystem for Linux running now. I'm gonna clear things out and just so we can see, if I type in ls, that displays the current contents of this directory. There's nothing there. Let's cd over to the root directory and do ls. And now you'll notice that there is a file structure, much like you would find in a Linux distribution. Specifically, this is the file structure for the root directory of Ubuntu, which is great. 
You can now navigate using this command line interface throughout your Ubuntu Windows subsystem for Linux environment, but most people don't want to stop here. Instead, they like to either install a desktop environment so they can see their applications, they can interact with the desktop, or you might want to try this next method. I don't necessarily like doing that because there's actually quite a few flaws that come with it. I've done it in the past where I've installed, let's say, a desktop environment like, F like XFCE and then manage it through SSH as a secure desktop connection. And it's not only a little slow, but it doesn't work quite well. Sometimes the restarts get messed up. So let me show you a different method here. Before I do that, let me install one application here because currently we can't run graphical applications from our Ubuntu side of the system. But let me do this anyway. I'm gonna first do sudo space apt space update just to update the repositories here, get the latest and greatest information for those repos so we can download whatever packages we need, and then type my password in for my administrative user. And as you can see, the repos are getting updated now. This won't take too long. All right, I'm gonna clear things out. And now what I'll do is install that next application. I'll use the Windows Store to do this and save me some time. In the search bar, I'm searching for G W S L. So we have G W S L, which is an app and it says it's an X server. So the X windowing system and X server help render windows and your user environment normally on Linux distributions. And this is an app created with that in mind for this windows subsystem for Linux. So now you can run those graphical applications directly in windows without actually having to have a desktop environment installed and the X server and all that is just handled here through this app called GWSL. It's free, so I'm just gonna select that button, start the download and give it a few moments here to install. It's around 90 megabytes. And then once things are finished here in the taskbar, we'll see GWSL running. And we can see it's running on localhost and there's various different options we can select from. So the best one here, honestly, is the Linux apps. So what does this do? Well, this can actually render those applications directly in Windows for you. So let's say I wanted to explore the file system of my Ubuntu 20.04 system. I can click on that and look at this. I have access to those directories that I spit out before directly in my file browser. I'll exit out of this because that's not quite as interesting as what we're gonna do next. Next, I'm gonna install an application directly through the terminal here for the Windows subsystem for Linux using Ubuntu by doing sudo apt install. And you can do whatever package you want, research your packages, install whatever you want. But for my particular needs, I want something much like the Office Suite. It's called Libra Office and I'm going to install this real quick. Now this is a fairly large size package because it's a office package that has multiple different applications, such as a word processor and basically an Excel spreadsheet application. So I'm gonna type yes and give this a few minutes to install. Of course, you don't have to install this. I'm just doing this one for an example so you can see something graphical running that's been installed on the Ubuntu side of things inside of Windows and how you would go about actually installing one of those applications. So again, I'm gonna give this a few moments and then we'll continue on. All right, now that I have my LibreOffice installed, I'm going back down to the taskbar where I can select GWSL again and select Linux apps. And look at that. Now I see LibreOffice, LibreOffice Calc, LibreOffice Draw, Math, and a few other ones that have been now installed for me to use on the Ubuntu 20.04 side of things. Well, all I have to do is click on one of these and that should launch the app directly in the Windows side of things and render it over here. And we can see in the background it is launched and I have it in a full screen mode here and it looks seamless. It looks like it belongs to Windows and it runs fairly smoothly. Of course, this is being ran on that virtual environment so it's not gonna be quite as quick as it would be to run a native application. But you can see how powerful GWSL is with the Windows subsystem for Linux and you can use this across the board with all your other Linux distributions that you have installed on your computer. Currently I just have Ubuntu installed and I can even type in here. So Savvy Nick was here. This is my first document created in LibreOffice and it still exists on the other virtual machine. 
it just gets rendered wonderfully here in Windows 11. And most users want to be able to do this because they want some sort of a graphical environment to be able to render graphical applications on the Windows side of things. That way you can interact with applications even in Linux. Now, one thing I will mention is that some of these applications don't render quite properly or get messed up, have exceptions. Uh, this is actually a rarity to even my surprise, but one example is GIMP, which is a graphical manipulation tool, much like Photoshop, and it's a free and open source software, but it doesn't quite launch properly using GWSL. So that's just a heads up, but Beats installing X server and an X window system, getting that all set up with a desktop environment, at least in my opinion, while using Linux on the Windows subsystem for Linux. Well, that's about it. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please make sure to post them in the comments section below. Also, make sure to subscribe for future videos and make sure to like the video. Catch me in a great community on Discord and I'll catch you in another video. Thanks for watching.